Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM221 Club story from Hemel Hempstead Town with me, Daniel. It's part 159 today and things are not quite going to plan. We face Atletico Madrid and Manchester United in the Premier League, but after last year where we couldn't score goals at all, we finally found a striker who can do it, we've got no one else who can, and now we seemingly can't defend. Don't be fooled by the two clean sheets we've had recently. There's an awful lot to get through. Add to that that Norwich are top of the Premier League and this has been a pretty balmy season so far. So if you're looking forward to finding out how it continues, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content from two long-term stories. You can find all the big playlists up in the eye above and key links down in the description below. But thank you as always for your support as we go in to two massive away games against Atletico Madrid and Manchester United. We have had trouble on the road this season. We've started having trouble at home as well. Let's start with the schedule so I can show you what's been going on. It's been carnage because if we have a look, we've got injuries in key positions and when you get three injuries, of course, two of them are going to be to your first choice and your backup in one area. But let's have a look at the schedule because it's not been a great October and we have started defending awfully. We conceded six goals in two Premier League games, but that doesn't even tell half the story. Let's go and investigate a bit more. We lost 3-2 at home to Norwich as yet again we were picked for Friday night TV coverage after the international break. Half the first team weren't fit, no Stamatis. Uh, we were missing out on Zarouk at centre-half as well. John Moore had a knock, couldn't play in goal, even though I would have probably rotated him anyway. And most importantly, Gianni Gilby wasn't fit enough to start. He came on and nearly saved us in the end, but it just shows what we're like without him. We went 1-0 up through Carlos Martin, who then got injured himself. Following that, we collapsed. Gianni Gilby came on and saved the day, almost. 92 minutes, he got a second goal back, but we weren't able to get an equaliser. So that's why Norwich are top of the league. We then bounce back at home in the Champions League against today's opponents, Atletico. One for Martin, one for Anders, one for Mellon, and one for Vitz Rubek, who of course spent some time there on loan a couple of years ago. Then the three all at Everton, and it just made me feel like we were cursed because there's something about away from home this year. We just can't win. At half time, we were 3 0 up. Gianni Gilby had scored two of them yet again. Chauvin had got one from a set piece. Kevin Herve injured. He's still out to this moment. And in the second half, we just fell to bits. I've never seen anything like it from this side. It's probably the closest we've had to the PSG game in this European Super Cup many years ago, where from 3-0 up, we threw it away. But this one hurt even more, just because it was such a pathetic effort. Following that, we did bounce back with two clean sheets in easier games on paper. Liverpool rotated a bit in the Carabao Cup. Srubeck and Coronel got our goals. And then against Middlesbrough, wasn't convincing, but we won 1-0. And guess who scored it? He saved our bacon yet again. Gianni Gilby to the rescue. So into this month, we have one striker who's capable of scoring. Not many defenders fit and capable of defending. And we have got a little bit of a crisis. Because you'll notice from this game that John Mellon played left back. The reason being... That of course the week after Herb got injured, Klass did exactly the same thing. Damage to the ankle which puts him out for a month. He's going to be missing for the next few weeks. As is Stanley Azoma who we're going to try and sell again in January. Not good news for us at the moment. But if we have a look at the squad, it's still relatively strong. Most people now tied down to longer deals. But we've got a big problem, haven't we? We are a little light in certain defensive areas. But the key issue is... We've still got no one other than Gilby who can score. Until January, perhaps. Because we are at the stage where we've reached an agreement with Chelsea and another player that could possibly join the front line. If I show you the transfers, we have got a 19-year-old advanced forward from Chelsea. Chibike Adogwu is the man. 44 million with potential add-ons taking it up to 76. Only 55 grand a week and a four and a half year deal. And he looks like a potential gem. Now, ignore the scout summary. Ignore the current rating. He's a wonder kid. He's quick. He's a brilliant finisher. He's great off the ball. He can pass. He can do all the other stuff as well. I think we've got a gem. And the reason I'm more happy to take the risk on him is even if he completely fails up front, 
he'll still be a backup to Coronel or a replacement for Vass in a long-term in centre mid. So he's not going to be a wasted transfer regardless. I also looked more carefully this time, a bit like we did with Gilby. When I look back at the success that Ricker had and the success that Jones had and the success that others in previous years and in previous divisions had, Javan Malcolm being another, they were all 5 foot 10 plus. And I look at Azoma where he's failing with the more direct style of play as well. Is it because when he's getting in behind fine, I know he's missing chances, but whatever on that. But when the long balls are going closer to the defender, those guys were winning flick-ons. Those guys were holding the ball up. And Azoma just can't compete physically. And maybe a few of the others too. So with a dog root, he's six foot two. He's brilliant in the air. He actually gives us another dimension. Might nick some cheap goals from set pieces. I think we finally have the answer. And if those two players that will have been together in the Chelsea youth sides, if they can score goals together and make a good partnership, I think we have our solution. I hope we do. Let's move on to the fixtures though, because that is for later down the line. We could do with some defenders being fit. We could do with deciding on our goalkeeper. But in the Champions League, despite our problems in the Premier League, we're nine points out of nine. So we're going to go back up. We're going to rotate. We'll be back in a moment to run through the team. Okay, this is what we've gone for today. And of course, it's not our usual flat 11 rotation, mainly because of the defensive positions. We've gone for Mario in goal and John Moore will play in the Premier League at the weekend. Dean Arthur starts at right back because I need to rest Chauvin. He's played too many minutes recently. Davris is in alongside Hannafan as a result. And John Mellon is out over at left back. He's the only option we've got for the next few weeks. De Vitter, Louise, Vass and Martin is the midfield you'd expect for this. And now Torres is alongside Rubek up front. Torres has scored one goal this year. He's been an absolute mess. I'm actually going to go and warn him on this occasion because it can't carry on like this. And his goal was in August, so Lord knows how many games it's been since he scored. Let's criticise his recent form. Come on, keep getting in the right positions, the goal will come. He's playing advanced forward today, so that should help. On the bench is Frederick Anders, who at the moment... I'm trying as my first choice in the league because he's scored whenever he's played in the Champions League. He's got the best average rating of all the other strikers. I know he's not ideal, but he's 5 foot 10. He's quick. He's strong. He's good in the air. I'm taking a gamble on him. He seems to be the only one that is delivering at the moment as the poacher. Srubek can perhaps change that today, but again, not really popped up with many goals other than the Carabao Cup where he scored two. So I'm not convinced by him at the moment either. Let's get into this game, try and get the job done, and we'll focus on United at the weekend. Well, Fernando Torres' side is very strong. Still playing Anzu Fathi into his mid-30s, but the rest of the team is fairly young, fairly competent. They had an awful day away from home against us last time. What will they do in this one? I'm hopeful that we can get at least a point, get the job done, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to get through regardless, so let's see how we get on today. Well, 12 minutes on the clock. It's been a quiet start for us so far, though. Dean Arthur's got the ball in an unusual fullback position. And Vass heads his cross over the bar. But it was a lovely delivery. Good move. Not able to make anything of it. And I feel like we're going to encounter the normal problem here. It seems to be a pattern, doesn't it? The last year and a half or so, if we don't have Gilby playing, or if we don't have Ricker playing even prior to that, we don't score goals. And this is the issue. You just see a frustrating nil-nil or one-nil coming as it's back to Thomas and Batterhoff through all to Acido. Can we deal with the defensive side? No, we can't. Anzu Fathi, with his walking stick intact, puts them 1-0 up. And we've got some trouble here on the road. We might be heading for defeat. Wouldn't be out of form for the last month, would it? Because we've been pretty awful. He's 36 now, but he's still got the goods. I mean, to be fair, he'd do a job for us up front at the minute. Maybe we have to do that in January. Everyone else does it in the AI market, so maybe we should go for an experienced man up there as well. Maybe Mario Ricca back at the age of 30, as De Vita goes back to Mario in goal. Davris gets it from the back. Plenty of time in possession. They're not pressing us that high. It's out to Mellon on the left, too. Very much a utility man at the moment. I feel like we're in the, the Arsenal Flamini days out there. As Torres has been put in, hasn't scored for ages, and he has scored now. That might be the moment we needed. Carlos Torres has turned up for the big one. Scored a fair few last year despite his problems. This season, only one in August. Now, you can make that two. And at half-time, that's how it stays. Both shots on target have hit the back of the net. It's not been a thriller. It's not been a great match. And actually, 
Got some really poor performers in that side. Strubeck and Vass in particular. And I think we might have a penalty there. Is that handball from Bravo? I think it is. It's a very fortunate one if we get it. Who's going to take the penalty? I think it will be Vass. There's no way this isn't getting given. Penalty awarded. Vass will take it as usual. Can he score? The midfielders so relied upon. That one goes under the keeper. He probably should have got a hand on it. It stays into the back of the net though. And it's 2-1 to Hemel Hempstead Town. I don't really care how they go in. And we're back with a free kick. The same man who just scored the penalty five minutes later. It's a good angle for him. Goes far post. Bentley hits the save. Strubeck blocks it. And it's cleared away downfield. I didn't notice that Bentley was the goalkeeper. That seems a, a very English name. Let's have a look. Who is in goal for Atletico Madrid? We're going to make some changes now. So we'll have a look there anyway. The opposition keeper is Callum Bentley. 30-year-old Jib Broughton International, and he's not very good, to be brutally honest. So I'm no wonder that we're getting some chances there, and no wonder he let the penalty straight under him. We have got three changes to make. We'll start with Louise in centre mid. He'll be replaced by Coronel, and they'll switch sides. We're also going to take off Strubeck for Anders, who will come on as the poacher alongside the advance forwards. We've got a nervous Carlos Martin, who's not in the best form at the minute. And we've also got defensive changes we could make. I'm going to give it 10 minutes. I'd ideally like to take Mellon off. But that means Davris or Zarouk at left back. And I'm not sure I'm confident with that. And as we come towards the final third. It is Atletico Madrid in possession. Through ball to Anzu Fathi. It's two passes. It's too easy. And it's the 36 year old. Who is just rolling back the years. And I'm not sure how he gave away a chance that simple. It really isn't good enough to be honest. Now Martin's got injured. Our last sub's made for us. I think we're going to go and Drek up because I can't afford to lose Gilby, quite frankly. So that means Vass will go number 10, De Vitter centre mid and Drekker in the holding role. At least it should make us a bit more solid. As we head into the last 10, that injury robs us of the chance of resting Mellon, which could be an issue. Thankfully, it's Tuesday to Sunday, so five days might be enough. Atletico have scored both of their shots on target. With five minutes stoppage time, it's going to be a draw. Look, it's been the pattern of away games this season. We've won one in the league. We've won one in the Champions League. We've drawn all the rest. We've done the same tonight. 2-2. Two, two. We still can't defend. We'll be back in five days for United at Old Trafford. That one could get pretty ugly. Fitness test time and Kevin Herb has failed his fitness test. Of course he has. So we go away to United under the ultimate pressure here because... We are nine points behind Norwich, who are still top after another win. Spurs won just behind them as well. And if United win, they go on to 27-2. If we win it, though, on 22, we're six off the top and we're close to some of the others. This game is huge. Let's have a look at what we can go through today. Who's fit, who's able to start, and where do we have to concede? Left back, still going to be a problem. John Mellon's the only one there. Well, it's actually got to a pretty laughable state now. I've got to put Herb and Azoma, who fail fitness tests on the bench because we haven't got any other subs. We're also playing people like Mellon out of position. We're taking a gamble on Anders, who we wanted to sell on deadline day or loan out up front. It's not great at the minute, let's be brutally honest. But we're as close to full strength as we can be. It's John Moore in goal. That is the big decision here today. Chauvin and Mellon are the fullbacks with Davris and Zaruk as centre-half. Zarouk's been complaining he's not played enough, but he's only not played when he's come back fatigued from international duty. So another one that we're going to have to try and deal with off the pitch. And Drekker, Stamatis, Coronel and Joe, the midfield diamond. We've not been able to put that four out too often this year. When we have, we have generally been the better side. And then Gilby needs to be the saviour again. It's very different to last year. Our midfielders now can't score. We've got Gilby basically scoring every goal for the team. And nobody else really contributing bar defenders from set pieces. Of course, Frederick Anders is alongside him. We'd love a big performance from him. But away at Old Trafford with a side lacking in confidence that hasn't won since his first away day in the league. I'm not sure we're going to get the victory here. Let's see how many points we can pick up. Any more than zero, I'll probably take it. Nine changes for us from the Champions League. Four for Manchester United. Musiala still going. Arca and Marazin in the middle, players we've tried to sign before. As a Silvera and Londono at the bench. Feels like Danemark's been there in goal for ages. Tavrez up front. He is a superstar. And of course, they've got Nagelsmann in charge. Simeone is gone. They've bought in the big guns again. Let's see how we get on. We know the lads are capable of it, but can they deliver? 
This is going to be the big question. Off to Old Trafford we go. Well, three and a half minutes on the clock. We're back with a John Mellon throw. Right down by the corner flag on that left. Delivers a great ball to the back post. Gilby's up. Hits the woodwork. It's the same goal threat it always is. But this time he can't find the back of the net. As Mellon's got a throw. Almost identical position. And Drecker plays it back to him. It's another good ball in. This time Arca wins it in the air. Falls as far as Chauvin on the right. He's had his midweek rest, so should be comfortable now. As Andreka gets it. Back to Zarouk. We start again on halfway. Comes forward to Stamatis. Inside to Njo. Space to find Gilby. In one-on-one. -on -one. Good save by the keeper. The pass, if we're being critical, maybe just slightly over hit. I mean, Gilby arrived at it very close to the keeper. Couldn't quite dink it over him. As the corner's into the back post, Silvera heads away. Stamatis brings it down left-hand side. Finds Davrish. Chips up to Njo. Forced wide with his first touch into Gilby. It's the same man again. If Gilby scores, we're on form. If he doesn't, we can't. We break the deadlock thanks to the man himself. He might prove to be my best ever signing. Him and Mario Ricca. And to be fair, as we're back for another corner, 15 minutes gone and Joe into the back post. Our best seasons in this save have been when we've had a star striker. And the ones where we haven't had that goal scoring number nine, We've not really, bar last season, where we stumbled over the line as Chauvin's pulled his hamstring on halfway. Tavares has a free run at goal. Thankfully, it's over the bar. It's another fullback injured. He's not even... That's annoyed me. He's got a bruised ankle. You've gone down on halfway and let someone in one-on-one because -on -one you've got a bruised ankle. That is scandalous. But if we go back to the original point, bar last year... It has been the four big number nines that have won us these leagues, that have got us through the divisions. And without them, we've looked poor. Gilby is the latest one. We've had Ricky J. Jones. We have had Mario Ricca. And of course, at the start, we had Victor Sedende. They are the men that we've relied on. As United are doing us massive favours here. Down to 10 men. Attacking player off for midfielder. And at 1-0 up, it would be criminal if we threw this away. Chauvin is not improving, so I'm going to take him off. The only option, I think, is to bring on Dean Arthur. The only fit option, I should say. So he's going to get another big half a game here. He's starting to get game time. We've had big crises defensively. But at half time, we're 1-0 up at Old Trafford. And we're also a man up. Let's hope we can cling on. The scoreboard looks good. But Gianni Gilby is still the only man scoring. As 10 minutes into the second half, we're back with a United throw. They are on the front foot, despite having one less man on the pitch. Marazin picks it up, goes over to Tavares. Good save by Moore. I thought he was offside. Nothing's given in the end, so it's a corner kick. And we are doing our best to let United back into this game. I'm going to have to think about changes soon. Anders up front hasn't worked either. So it's hoofed away by Coronel from Silvera. And maybe we look at Coronel, we look at Stamatis in the middle. Is there someone we can take off? Even De Vitter may be in the holding role. As Fabian throws in from the right to Hopper. United the better side at the moment. Into the back post and Drecker away. Juric the sub brings it down to Marazin. Has Juric in support to Tavares, to Musiala. Don't you dare throw this away. Londono inside from the left to Juric. Oh, why? Why does it have to be evened up? Every game, and you can go back and watch the games that we've had on camera. Every game where we our opposition go down to 10 men, we then concede a penalty. It has to be evened up. It's a stupid decision. We've allowed pressure on ourselves. We've not taken a hold of the game. And again, it's probably three or four times this has happened in the last two years. We've conceded an equaliser against 10 men. It is a massive mental block in this team. With half an hour to go, we're going to have to go attacking now. Anders is off. He's had a shocker. Torres scored in a week, we'll give him a go. And we're also going to bring on Vasva Coronel. Or do I take off Stamatis after that? Yes, I do. I'm going to go Louise on, Stamatis off. Let's see what it does. 25 minutes left, fingers crossed. We're back in the final 20 minutes as Dean Arthur has the ball at right back. Again, defensively, it's the centre-halves that the rating's gone from, despite the midfielder giving away a pen. Davris carries the ball out of defence, though, to Louise. And picks it up again on halfway to Zarouk. Space to run into. Forces himself wide. Has options down the line. Arthur's one of them. To Louise and Gilby. We need more heroics from him. Chips into Torres. That's the moment. He's back in goal scoring form. Gilby turns provider. Carlos Torres puts one away. 
And isn't it nice to see another striker scoring? 2-1 Hamill, don't throw it away this time. Into stoppage time, three minutes of it. We've dropped to a balance mentality. We've got a throw on the left with Mellon, exactly where we want the ball. Coronel then decides to give it away with a five-yard pass, and United can play out. It's one final chance for them. Hopper, got a man over on the right, but instead goes short to Tavares. Long ball to Musiala, who's being chased down by Dean Arthur. Chips into the box. Tavares has missed his header, and John Moore has spared his blushes. He has had a shocking game, Tavares. He's starting to struggle physically, and my word is it showing in his displays. Dean Arthur heads away the corner. Torres will pick it up. Now can the front two go? He's got Gilby with him. Took ages to get rid of it. But the full-time whistle does go. It's a one-goal victory. It is an away win. We have to be pleased with that. But it's not a convincing display yet again. 2-1. Gilby and Torres get in the goals. Thankfully, another striker scores. There's another striker who's going to be joining the club. We're starting to evolve this side, but defensively, and I know it's mitigated due to a number of injuries, there are some very big concerns. Let's get through and see what the post-match press conference says. I should mention as well, the Carlos Martin injury in the last game, three months he's going to be out for, so we might need one or two more in the window, or maybe some recalled loans. Let's go and skip ahead, see when we're next back. Well, not the first nor last time we'll see the line Gilby inspires Hemel Hempstead win this year. He has inspired virtually everything good we've done in recent months. He has been a superstar and he will always be a superstar. The best signing we've made in a long time. 11 in 11 for him. Let's have a look at the schedule though for when we're going to be back. I'm going to try and leave it a while. I don't really need to show the last Champions League game because we've already got through, or the last two in fact. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to come back for the Carabao Cup quarterfinal at home to Arsenal and the Spurs game against one of the title contenders after. Those two games are going to be big for our season because as it is, I don't think we win the Premier League. So we need to get a cup run under our belt as well. So those are the two games we're going to show against the North London rivals. If you did enjoy this one, frustration again defensively. And Gianni Gilby, the one man show continues. Then please do put a thumbs up on it. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content. All the key links up in the eye above and down in the description below. Let me know what you think of the other striker coming in. Is he going to be the solution to our problems? We've got a further scout report on him now. He looks very good. I'm happy with the man himself. Let me know if you think he can form a successful partnership with Gilby. Please do check out everything else in the meantime. I'll put the top three playlist above my head now and the link tree is in the description below with links to virtually every platform you can think of. And I'll be back here in a few days time. The start of next week is going to be big. We've got lots of home games in a row. And we need to win them against all the big boys. I'll see you there to find out if we can.